Lord, let's listen for the word of the Lord. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea, in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. But he called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, we are returning again to our year-long sermon series on remembering who we were, reflecting on who we are, and imagining who we could be. And we're doing so because today is a special day. Now, I know I feel like I've been saying today is a special day a lot recently, but it's different because it isn't a special day for the church at large. It isn't something recognized by the PCUSA or the entire Christian faith. It's special for us. Here in this today is our 90th congregational meeting, and quite possibly our last one as a church we've been for these last 90 years. And that can be exciting and nerve-wracking. We can be eagerly awaiting the possibilities for the future, while also anxious. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times the scriptures for the week just perfectly fit the moment. Today is no different because what better scripture about the unknown future is there than the disciples being called by Jesus? As we think about our past, our present, and future, we hear the disciples about to hear the call of Christ and immediately decide to follow. Now, before this moment, these brothers lived very, very ordinary lives. They were not children of aristocracy. They weren't in line to become the chief priests or influential rabbis. Their entire lives were focused on family, community, and fishing. Andrew and Peter, James and John, they go out very, very early in the morning. As anyone who fishes knows, you got to go when the fish are biting, and it always seems that's at 4 a.m. They take the time to mend their nets, making sure it had no holes and the fish could escape. They go out on their boat or stand knee deep in the water and they cast out their nets, all in the hope of catching a few fish. Now, maybe they could sell some, but certainly the main focus was on catching enough to feed their family. And so was the life of a simple fisherman from the backwater town of Galilee. Nothing exciting ever happened there. 
and other than going to Jerusalem, most people never left that town. So their family and their community were all they had. But these soon four to these four soon to be disciples, Peter and Andrew and James and John, well, they had something else inside of them. Something very deep, leading them to be uncovered by a voice. Something they didn't even know they had or wanted in their lives. However, it was all about to change. It would all change on one very, very ordinary day. Now, coming out of Advent and Christmas, and knowing that Lent and Easter are just a few weeks away already, it's easy to think everything around Christ is earth-shattering. It's easy to forget, especially surrounded by Christmas and Easter, that those moments are only a small portion of the liturgical year. Most of the year, even this week, is made up of what we call ordinary time. Now it means ordinal, like counting numbers, but it really feels ordinary because of what it is not. It is not Advent or Lent. It is not Christmas or or Easter, rather, it's all those weeks during the year that just seem to come and go. That if we aren't careful, we blow right through them without realizing it. Ordinary weeks tend to blend together. We can easily lose track of those weeks. And these disciples were in the midst of a decades-long ordinary life. Each day, each week, each month, each year, all blending together in ordinariness. They weren't talking about those stories of a star pointing strangers from the east to a manger scene. They weren't talking about an angel telling some guy in a dream to take his family to Egypt. These four fishermen were going about their lives as they did every other day. Until this one day, when a stranger suddenly found them on the shore and changed the course of their entire lives forever. The stranger comes to them and without thinking for even a second, they just drop everything and they follow him. Now I know we've been conditioned to immediately picture the spectacular when it comes to Jesus. Touching the water and turning empty nets into fishing nets that are exploding with fish. Removing demons, turning water into wine, feeding thousands and thousands with a few fish and some bread. Walking on water. So don't worry if you thought you would hear some amazing miracle happening in this story today. I, I reread this passage several times, thinking I must be missing something. I must have skipped over a few verses. But no, this is the most ordinary interaction possible. Nothing amazing happens at all. At this moment in their lives, these disciples don't witness some spectacular miracle. In fact, it was so ordinary that with James and John, we don't even hear Jesus' words. And yet, without thinking, they respond. All because this stranger said, follow me. From that simple moment of follow me, their lives were never the same. They didn't know what their future would hold. But they followed Jesus because he said, follow me. I mean, was it always easy? Of course not. I mean, especially for Peter. It's almost funny how many times Peter essentially gets it, and then he takes a hard turn and entirely misses the mark. This disciple, this, this rock, this foundation of the future church, gets it so wrong at one point, 
And Jesus shouts at him, get away from me, Satan. Their lives, after this moment, would never be ordinary again. These four disciples, along with the others, would spend the next three years traveling to places they never imagined they would see. They listened to this Messiah teach. They witnessed his healing powers. They experienced his love and his grace and his mercy, but it was not always easy. These same disciples would get thrown out of town and be at a loss for why they couldn't heal like Jesus when he told them they'd be able to. Tradition tells us all the disciples end up martyred, but that is the life of discipleship. Moments of great love and joy and celebration, moments of failure and disappointment and struggle. The life of discipleship is still a human life after all. What makes it different is how we respond when we hear Jesus call us. And not on Christmas morning, not on Easter Sunday, those are too easy. Of course we get wrapped up in our faith on those days. It's when we hear Jesus call us on a random Sunday in January, on a Tuesday in June, on a Thursday in August. It's when we hear Jesus say, follow me, and we immediately follow, just as the disciples did. When we hear him and follow, we know our lives will never be the same. So today is truly a special day. Today we remember those who heard Jesus calling out to them, saying, follow me, and they responded. And after years of unaffiliated growth, in 1931, the members of the Union Non-Denominational Chapel heard Christ calling, follow me, and applied to become members of the Presbyterian of Elizabeth. On May 25, 1933, the chapel became the First Church Islam, Presbyterian. From there, the 36 charter members and 46 transfer members continued listening to Christ saying, follow me. For the next 30 years, the members of the First Church of Islam continued to see membership grow and grow until finally peaking at 675 members in 1965. And despite declining membership as a case in churches all over the country and the world, the members always made sure to listen heard him saying, follow me, the members did. Does that mean it was always easy? No. 1945, Sunday Eve services were discontinued. Times change, and so does the church. But then in 1953, the members heard Christ calling again, follow me, and the name of the church changed to what we know today, First Presbyterian Church of Islam. Names change, but our call to follow does not. So today is truly a special day. We can remember our history as a congregation, one that went from non-denominational to Presbyterian, one that went from small to quite large and declined again. A church that, no matter what else was happening, worshipped and praised God. And since 1954 has done so in this very sanctuary. We simply cannot remember who we have been. Remembering those moments in the past that our church heard Christ call. We also have to look at ourselves today and reflect on how we respond when we hear Jesus say, follow me. Perhaps we must first ask if we ever hear Christ's call. Because let's be honest, it isn't always easy to hear. The 
those times where we look back and wish our church was still burning to the point of overflowing. How we keep ourselves from hearing Christ's call today. When we spend time saying we want to go back to a previous day in the church, to a better day. How we keep, keep ourselves from hearing Christ call us today. The church is reformed and always reforming, not always going back years. See, in a rapidly changing world, we need to realize that the answers are not always in the past. Sometimes they're in the unknown tomorrow. And we can only hear them when we're open to them. Because going forward is what Christ wants for the church, for this church. So if we only want to have what we once had, we will miss what might be. Today, as much as we want to celebrate and fondly remember the times when the church heard Christ calling out, follow me, we also must reflect on how and where we hear Christ calling us now. Oh, it can be hard, I promise you. We do hear it, even if we don't realize. When 20 families come here each month for food, we are hearing Christ tell us to follow him. When we offer gifts of money to help out the children's fund, Camp Johnsonburg, or any other mission, we're hearing Christ call us to follow him. When we were asked about merging congregations, we said yes. We were hearing Christ's call to follow him. When we hear Jesus, when we react by eagerly and immediately responding of amazing things are possible. Now look, we don't know what our future holds. No one knows and no one can know. Honestly, no one should want to know. While it might give us comfort to know exactly what to expect next year, in five years, and ten years, why would we want to miss living. The disciples had no clue what to expect. They didn't know what their future would be. But that did not stop them from responding, not even for a second. Now what we do know, what I am confident about, is that this is a moment when Christ is calling us. I know it. Christ is calling our churches to become something new. And I know that when we respond like the disciples, anything is possible. Now don't get me wrong, it won't always be easy. Discipleship is never meant to be easy. So we will find moments of struggles, moments when traditions may change. We cannot hope to make traditions as a new church by desperately hanging on to old ones. There will be times when our heads butt up against one another, but we will work through it together. We must work through it together. And while all that is true, it's also going to be okay. I promise you, it is okay. What matters is not how we've always done things. What matters is how Christ is calling us to do things today, and importantly, tomorrow. Because when we hear Jesus calling us, saying, follow me, and we respond without fear, anything is possible. Do not let fear and uncertainty of the unknown tomorrow keep us from responding with joy to Christ's call today. Friends, happy 90th. Now, we may have some conflicting feelings because we want to celebrate our church and its history, but we also know after today things will change. Next year will not be our 91st anniversary, but rather our first. We have a chance to do something new as the body of Christ. Jesus is calling us to do something new. So as disciples of Christ in 2023, how can we do anything other 
then eagerly and immediately respond. How can we not respond like Peter and Andrew, like John and James? Now, it may not always be easy, but it will be, I promise you, amazing. If, only if, you take this opportunity to hear Christ say, follow me, to drop everything and follow me. Christ is guiding this path for us today. We clearly heard him call us to follow him. And now we are in the process of doing just that. So let's celebrate today. Celebrate every day, eagerly anticipating what is to come. Amen. Let us pray. God of all time, today we listen for your call to follow Christ. Not through miraculous stars and gifts, but, but in the midst of our everyday, ordinary lives. As this church prepares to look toward the future, fill our hearts and minds with memories of days gone by, reflections on where we respond actively, and where we can do better, and visions of where our future may lead us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, please rise if you're able for our next hymn, number 314, Longing for Light, We Wait for Darkness. We wait in darkness.